Hi ho, Tudor minded people. It's Philadelphia Carrie for Tudor Time Machine. Today's word of the week is ambodexter. When I call on Lady St. Lo and she compliments me on my favourite ermine trimmed gown, I say, My dear friend, you are a double dealing ambodexter, for I know you spoke ill of the very same frock to Lady Howard only last week. Philadelphia, that sounds Awful. Ambodexter. How now, Tudor Files? What think you? If you're new here, I'm Gage. I'm Jessica, and this is Tudor Word of the Week with Tudor Time Machine. Ambodexter is a Tudor word meaning someone who is a double dealer, or two-faced, as we would say. Philadelphia, how do you spell that word? It is spelled A-M-B-O-D-E-X-T-E-R. Ambodexter. This word, of course, relates to the term ambidextrous, meaning someone who has equal skill in both the left and the right hand. And we find this word ambidexter quite a bit in Tudor and Jacobean plays. There are a lot of plots with double dealing. Our example of a 16th century use of the word comes from the comedy The Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, which was written anywhere from about 1602 to 1607. They don't know exactly when it was written, but it was registered in 1607. It's credited to Middleton, but it was probably a collaboration with Thomas Decker. Right. And the version that still exists now could well have been revised from the original by the much lesser known author with the fantastic name of Lordling Barry. Ah, who, by the way, is intriguingly credited as being a playwright and a pirate. Ooh, an exciting double life. Lordling was an ambodexter. The play is a satire on a Christian sect called Familia Caritatis, which was founded in Germany in the 16th century. And this sect spread to England and was called the Family of Love. Familialists, as they were called, believed that all things were ruled by nature and not directly by God, and also that no one should be condemned to death for their opinions, particularly religious opinions, and also they were nonviolent. I mean, that all sounds pretty reasonable to me. Maybe I'm a familialist and I never knew it. It didn't sound reasonable to the governments in Europe and England at the time. It sounded subversive and strange. And a governmental smear campaign was started against the sect that accused them of practicing what we would call today free love. So that's essentially the plot of the play. The familiists are all having sex with each other while posing as virtuous. There are two honest lovers, Maria and Gerardine, who are not members of the sect. They're being kept apart by Maria's uncle and his wife, who are members of the sect. In order to keep Maria's money for themselves. Money and sex rule the plot, then as now. So Maria and Gerardine have a balcony scene, which is pretty much a send-up of the one in Romeo and Juliet, and it's pretty funny. So this Romeo and Juliet balcony scene was already famous, I mean, even infamous, by 1602. The play ends in the hero Gerardine posing as a judge to reveal the hypocrisy of the members of the family. (laughs) Philadelphia, can you give us the line with our Tudor word of the week, ambodexter? It would be my pleasure. The character, dry fat, a most disreputable merchant, says, Tut, none knows our secrets. We can speak fustian above their understanding and make asses' ears attentive. I'll play ambodexter. Wow. Philadelphia, there's another word in that that's unfamiliar to me. What does he mean by we can speak fustian above their understanding? I am charmed you inquired. Fustian is a heavy cotton fabric woven with wool. My favorite often uses fustian to pad his calves to make his legs look finer. Philadelphia, even in a few hundred years, men are still padding their calves. But now sometimes they actually put the padding under their own skin. Is it so? I should like to see that. I love a fine calf. Bastian can also be used figuratively to mean language that is pompous and inflated. Padded, in fact. Ah, thank you, Philadelphia. So try using our Tudor word of the week, ambodexter, and let us know how it goes. And join us next week when Philadelphia Carey surprises us with a new word. I'm very surprising. Join us. <laughs> <laughs>